Hello, and welcome to More Chemistry with Mr. Hicks. Today, we're going to be taking a look at empirical formulas of hydrates. Now, this is part of uh, a series of videos that I've done that is ranged in everything from calculating moles to uh, empirical formulas, which was I did last. And this one's kind of an extension of that. It's finding the empirical formula of a hydrate. Uh, so, uh, if you're following along, that's where we're at in this series. Now, when I finish, I'm hoping that you'll be able to calculate the empirical formula of a hydrate. That's our goal. And most hydrates, uh, in fact, I don't know of any that are different, uh, they are only an, an empirical formula. So, uh, we just are looking for a unit and how many waters there are that's attached to that unit. And that usually comes out to be an empirical formula. I don't know whenever it's not, so I've never seen one that hasn't been. So, um, again, if you weren't with us, uh, if you didn't watch my video, the last one on empirical formulas, I went through this little uh, set of directions here that I have. It says uh, change it to grams, change it to moles, divide by the smallest, and make it whole. We were doing that for elements. The difference this time is with uh, hydrates, we're going to be looking at how much of it is the anhydrate and how much of it is the uh, water. And so when we change it to grams, we're going to be changing the anhydrate to grams. We'll be changing the water to grams, changing the water or the anhydrate to moles, then dividing by the smallest one of those, which is normally the anhydrate, and then making it a whole which a lot of times we don't have to do this step. In fact, I can't think of any examples where we have to do that last part of it. So I have an example here with some copper sulfate. And uh, remember with anhydrate, with hydrates, we can heat them up, drive off the water, and then that'll tell us how much water was a part of the hydrate itself. And that's how we're going to get our data. So when we look at these problems, we're going to see things about here is the mass of the copper sulfate hydrate right here. So this is when we first started the experiment. We heated it up, and then afterwards we weigh it, and here is the mass of the anhydrous copper sulfate right there. So it's given us two pieces of information out of here. So one of them is the copper sulfate hydrate. And again, this is the hydrate. So I have some water that's here, but I don't know what. And in fact, this is what I'm really trying to solve for right there. I want to know how many waters are attached to this copper sulfate. So that's what I'm trying to find in the end. Uh, well, let's see. So what I want to do is I want to do one calculation for the copper sulfate. And I want to do a second calculation for the water. So it says change it to grams. Well, let's see. Um, I already have my information in grams. So like you've seen in another video, we can sometimes skip this first step. I would use that step if it was in a percentage format uh, rather than in grams, which it already is. So I'm going to move to the next one. It says change it to moles. So um, let's see. Do I have the number of grams for just the copper sulfate without any water? And the answer to that is yes. So I have the anhydrous copper sulfate here. That is the copper sulfate without any water. And I have 1.59 grams of that, of the copper sulfate. So I'm going to take this, and I'm going to change it to moles. And I think for the anhydrous one, you'd have to calculate what the molar mass is. But I have it down here as uh, 159.6. And of course, I got that from calculating its molar mass. So when I crunch that out, I get 0 0.00996. Now, um, 
with this number, I want to keep a lot of these digits right here, as many of them as possible. That's going to make it so that my calculations come out a lot more accurately uh, and precisely uh, than if I kind of round it off too much. So beware, you want to keep quite a few digits there. For the water, uh, how am I going to find out how many grams of water this is going to take uh, or this had in it? Well, uh, here was the copper sulfate with the water in it, right? And then here is the copper sulfate without the water. So if I subtract these two from each other, then I'll end up finding out how much the water is, which when I do that, I find out that I had about 0.91 grams of water that was inside of my sample. So now that gives me a starting point for my water. And I'm going to change it to moles. And when I run that calculation, I got 0 0.050. So, now I know how much um, water I have in moles, and I, and I know how much copper sulfate I have in moles. So the next part of our little rhyme up here, change it to grams, change it to moles, divide by the smallest and make it a whole, I need to divide by the smallest. So I pick the one that is the smallest of these two. Like I said, usually it's going to be the anhydrate. I don't know of any examples where it's not. Um, so we're going to divide this by the point zero zero nine nine six, and I'll divide this down here by point zero zero nine nine six. And when I get done with that, this is going to be equal to one, right? <clears throat> and the other one is going to be equal to five. And again, I'm just throwing that through my calculator there. So again, we don't have any fractions here. Like I said, I've never seen a problem with a fraction. But we don't have any fractions here, so we can skip this last step about making it a whole. And now I have my two pieces of information. I have that for every one copper sulfate, I have five waters. So I've gone from where I could figure out just what is that ratio there through this empirical formula process. Well, how is that? As usual, I have one on here for you to try. And I'm going to go ahead and pause for a little bit. You might want to pause uh, the, uh, the, the recording here and try to work this one out yourself. And then I'll come back whenever you're ready and show you how I did it. So the next one that I have for you to practice with is with just another hydrate here. It has another little twist to it. So read the question carefully so that you can see what that twist is. All right. Okay, how'd you do? Did you see that twist there that I threw into it? Something a little bit different? I hope you did. So in this example here, we saw that we have the five grams of our hydrated nickel two chloride. And again, we're looking for that number right there. What is this? How many waters are attached to this? And it said that this time, during the heating, we lost 2.27 grams of water. So this time it didn't tell us what the anhydrate was. It told us how much water was evaporated. So uh, we could do the same thing here. 
I'm just going to subtract the 2.27 grams of water from it. And what will I be left with? Well, if I got the water, I'll be left with how much the nickel chloride weighed in the end. So uh, when I do that, I find out that the anhydrous nickel 2 chloride is 2.73 grams. Now I'm all set to follow this. Uh, change it to grams? Well, we're already there. So I'm skipping to change it to moles. So I'm going to take each one of them here. I'm going to take the anhydrous nickel 2 chloride. That was my 2.73. And I'm going to take my water, which was the 2.27. And I'm going to convert both of these to moles. And for this one, I've got that as 0 0.0211 moles of nickel chloride. And I have that it is uh, 0.126 moles of water. Now again, I'm going to divide by the smallest. This one, of course, comes out to one. Whoops, there we go. Comes out to one. And the other one comes out to six. So now I know that the formula here that I have is nickel to chloride hexahydrate. And that would be my answer. So today we saw how we could put together our empirical formula techniques that we used and use this with hydrates to determine what the number of waters are that are bonded to our formula units in hydrates. All right, well, good luck with your chemistry. And I hope to have you join us again sometime.